everybody, it's Andrew Newland with Newtography, yet again. Have you ever wondered what MASP stands for? In this video, we're going to go over the uh, camera modes and what all those random letters on that dial actually mean. So put on your learning caps and let's spend the next few minutes learning about camera modes. <laughs> spin the next few minutes. Get it how you spin the camera dial. <laughs> We are gathered here today to talk about the mode dial of our DSLR cameras. The mode dial is on the top of most DSLR cameras, and this dial has various settings that determine how you're going to shoot. Now, the two biggest contributors to how your shot is going to turn out are aperture and shutter speed. If you're not familiar with these two things, then head on over to our video about the exposure triangle. So basically, what your camera does is measure the light in any given scene and try to guess what your shutter speed, aperture, and flash should be set at. So really, the camera is just making the decisions for you. Which is a very difficult thing since the camera isn't a human. And it doesn't know that even though you set it to auto, you really don't want that flash popping up every time you try to take a picture. So, these different camera modes help take some of the decisions off the camera and put them onto you. Which may sound a little scary, but when you learn how easy it can be, then it'll help you to never miss another one of little Timmy's soccer goals. Okay, so, let's start with the auto modes. Now, believe it or not, all of these modes are just a joke put there by the camera manufacturer to make your pictures turn out bad. Like, have you ever noticed when you put it into flower mode and you try to take a picture of a beautiful flower, that picture comes out as not a beautiful flower. And the same thing happens with mountain in a box mode and even lady in hat mode and especially guy getting hit in the face by a ninja star mode. Now, obviously that was all a lie. Liar! But, but the point I'm trying to make is just that the more decisions you put on your camera, the more likely your camera's gonna misjudge what it is that you really want, or just get thrown off by a weird lighting in the background, and then make you miss that money shot. So, what I suggest is that you get out of these auto modes, and let's get you up to these top four modes. MASP! Now, let's start with the P, or program mode. Now, this mode is why I know you can get out of those other auto modes because the P mode is fully automatic. The only difference between P and auto or green mode is that you decide when the flash comes up. So when you're in green or auto mode and you press the button down to focus and the scene is a little dark, your flash automatically pops up. And to me, that gets really annoying. So let's go ahead and switch it over into P mode. Then all you have to do to get your flash up is press the flash button on the side of the camera. So in P mode, the camera still decides what shutter speed and aperture to shoot at, but you decide when to use the flash. I personally like to use the P mode when I'm in a rush and I just wanna get the shot really fast, but really only when it's something simple like a landscape or a person that's gonna be static, a static image where something's not moving and I'm just in a hurry to get the shot. Throw it in P mode, shoot away, move on. Next we have S mode or shutter priority mode. On some cameras, this shows up as TV mode which stands for time value. In this mode, you pick the shutter speed and the camera decides what aperture to shoot at. All cameras have a thumb scroller where you control your shutter speed or aperture or ISO. So you can scroll the shutter speed up until you see the letters LO displayed on the screen. This means that the light in the scene is too low and the camera cannot open the aperture up anymore. So if you pass this point, your photos may come out dark or underexposed. And you can scroll your shutter speed up until you see the letters HI appear on your screen. Which means that there's too much light in the scene and the camera can't close down the aperture anymore. If you shoot past this, 
your photos may come out too bright or overexposed. So, why would you want to decide what your shutter speed is? Well, if you watched our video on the exposure triangle, then you know that the shutter speed controls how your camera captures motion. So you would use shutter priority mode whenever you want more control over the motion in your image. So if you want to freeze the action in sports, then you want a high shutter speed. So scroll your dial over to shutter speed mode and crank up your shutter speed until you get to that low mark, then notch it down a few times and shoot away. I typically shoot between 1 400th and 1 1600th of a second whenever I'm shooting sports or action, depending on how much motion there is and how bright it is outside. And sometimes I'll even crank it up to 1 8000th of a second if I happen to be shooting a motorcycle race on the surface of the sun. Now, let's look at aperture priority mode which is displayed as an A for aperture or an AV for aperture value on your camera dial. In this mode, you decide what aperture to shoot at and the camera decides what shutter speed to use. Now, a lot of professionals use aperture mode because the aperture controls your depth of field or what part of your image is going to be in focus. So, when you want to blow your background out and give your image that real professional look, Go ahead and switch it to aperture mode and crank that dial down until your F number is as small as it will go and then start shooting. And with this low F number, it's going to give you a really creamy blurry background and a sharp subject. Now if you get too low with your F number, then your depth of field is very shallow and it becomes difficult to focus whenever you're doing portraits. When shooting people, when taking pictures of people, I usually keep it at F2 or above. When you start getting lower than that, then your depth of field is really shallow and it becomes difficult to get your focus just right on the person's face. So, since you really want to keep their eyes in focus, I suggest keeping at 2 or 2.8 and above, that way you can get the whole front of the face in nice focus and blur the background. Now, on the opposite side, if you're doing a landscape and you're really setting up an amazing scene, you want to make sure that you capture everything in your image in crisp focus. That's when you put it in aperture mode and crank your f-stop up really high. And on many zoom lenses, there's what's known as a sweet spot where the lens is at its optimal sharpness. It's usually somewhere around f8 where they are the most sharp. So keep that in mind when you use this mode and you really want to control the focus of your image. Now, for the sacred and holy M or manual mode. This mode lets you make all the decisions. You set the shutter speed and the aperture and you have complete control over your exposure. Now, I wouldn't suggest starting out here if you're new to photography. I would, however, suggest using this as a practice mode if you're new to strengthen that oh-so-important shutter muscle of yours. So, how you can practice is to throw your camera into manual mode and then go to different lighting environments and try to guess the settings. This will help you get better acquainted with light and help you take one step forward in being a better photographer. Now, when should manual mode be used? Believe it or not, every pro doesn't have their camera in manual mode 100% of the time. Every mode on your camera is there to make your job easier. And like all the other modes, manual mode is best used when it's most convenient. I use manual mode when I'm shooting sports and the lighting is going to be consistent. Sometimes when you're in shutter priority mode and you're shooting sports, you may notice that the camera guesses wrong every once in a while and you'll get an image that's too bright or too dark. So, if I know the lighting is going to be consistent, then I throw it in manual mode, I shoot a few test shots to get my settings right, and then I keep it there. Then I won't risk missing any shots because I know that my exposure is going to be the same the entire time. Another time when I use manual mode is when I want to get a little more artistic with my images. And maybe I want to underexpose or overexpose a shot on purpose. Then I put it in manual mode and that gives me complete control to create exactly what I want. I also use manual mode when I'm using an off-camera flash or light source. But that's a topic for a whole nother video. Now, for those of you who are wondering about the other third of the exposure triangle, aka the ISO, well, your ISO is always manually set in your camera. So you personally go in and set it lower or higher depending on what you need. And if you don't want to mess with it, 
then most cameras have an auto ISO mode. And that lets the camera make that decision for you as well. Okay, so those are all of the things that I know about camera modes. Uh, if you know something that I don't, feel free to comment and chime in and share your knowledge with myself and the world. Um, thanks everybody for watching. If you like this, then subscribe and learn all of the things there are to know about photography ever, all of them. Just feel free to submit topics for future videos and get ready because next time we're gonna go over lenses and understanding what all those crazy numbers mean, how to use them, and which lenses you should buy when starting out. Love you, bye. here today to talk about the mode dial on our DSLR cameras. We're going to talk about camera modes and whatever it is that that little circular Ouija board actually does. If you enjoyed this then subscribe! Uh, please, please subscribe because that's how YouTube judges popularity and I want to be one of the cool kids maybe. And Pac-Man eating a flower mode and I can poop shapes mode and aerial view of sprinter running off the top of a building mode, and clear box of sugar mode, and right side of woman's face mode. MASP actually stands for martial arts sucks, pal. Miniature adults sound funny. Most adolescents suck at photography. Moist antelopes secrete pheromone. Musical aardvarks smell poopy. Masculine aunts scare people. Most adults should ph photography. Morbid artists seem professional. Musky and stinky pants. So put on your learning caps. 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 Put on your learning caps. Caps. And let's put on your learning caps. Put on your learning caps. Spin, spin the next few minutes. Spin, spin the next few minutes. Get it? Yeah, you get it. So, put on your learning caps and let's spend the next few minutes learning about camera modes. So, put on your learning caps and let's spend the next few minutes learning about camera modes. Another time I use manual mode is when I want to get a little more sar sarcastic when I want to get sarcastic. MASP! 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 MASP!